the case. If we have it, we have it. If not, at least we were here. All right. So um, my name is Elisa, um, and I am the admin of EC through six. Uh, boot camp. I am also the admin of PPR, STR, ESL groups on Facebook. So you might have seen me um, in other sessions and things like that. Um, I am also a reading and writing teacher. I've been for the past five years. Um, I have my master's in education and I am a test prep tutor. I've been for the past five years and a certified teacher as well. So my goal and mission is to help you guys get to that 240 for EC through six. I know it is like it is, it can be a difficult exam because I like to be careful with my words. It can be, but it also can be, um, it can be easy in a sense if we prepare for it, right? I always say opportunity, success is when preparation meets opportunity, right? So if we prepare and we're ready for the opportunity, then we will be good to go. Um, so... I am the owner of Ivy League Ready Tutoring, and what we do is specialize in test prep. So we help with ELAR 4 through 8, STR, EC through 6, PPR. We do have a 95% pass rate. Most people who come through us will pass. We're all about making sure that you're ready to pass your exam. Um, I am on here, and I'll be specializing in ELAR uh, social studies. Um, Lisa is also here. She is a brilliant math tutor. And so um, she will also be here um, to answer questions and to also just make sure you understand the math portion. Lisa, would you like to come off mute and just introduce yourself briefly? Sure. Welcome, everyone. Yes, I am a math teacher and considered a math specialist. Uh, I have been teaching for 23 years, so I know what it's like to take those tests, but um, I can break it down for you if you need. Thank you. Thank you so much. She really, really can. Um, she was going over some math with me and I just had a light bulb moment. I was like, oh, that's where that came from. And so, um, as a teacher, we're always learning every day, and so we should be learning new things. And Miss Lisa was definitely able to help me to understand that difficult concept. And you guys will see what I'm talking about a little bit later, um, as she explains some math that's in EC through uh, the EC through six exam. All right. So just a little bit about strategies. It is important to break down the competencies. You have ELAR right? Um, you have the math portion, science, social studies. You also have fine arts. Within fine arts, you have the music portion, you have the theater, you have the, um, the physical health. And so there's a lot of different parts that you have to learn at a quick rate. And then you also have to be efficient. It has to be correct. Um, so breaking down those competencies are going to be important. Pull out vocabulary and study them. It's important to know what phonological awareness is. For those of us who we like to learn on the go, I always say, hey, a, a great Quizlet will be helpful. I will say, don't just take any Quizlet that someone gives you because you don't need to know 300 terms, right? I would say start with the practice exam and see, okay, what words do I keep seeing in these in these practice questions? And that's what I need to make sure that I know, right? If phonological, phonemic awareness, fluency, semantics, if these are words, alphabetic principle that you see a lot of on these practice exams, then I would just make sure that I know that vocabulary. Okay, let's see. Um, so unfortunately at this time, we won't be sending out these slides. Um, well, let me see. Yes, I can send out this slide. I can. I'll send it out for you. Um, let's see. We also want to make sure we look for trends within the competencies. So even with math, um, there's a lot of scenario-based questions. And you want to be picking the answer choices where students are discussing and, oh, bless me. 
where students are discussing, they're thinking, they're sharing out, even in those math questions that are scenario-based, because there are a lot of scenario-based questions. When I was taking the EC36, you know, when I took the math portion, there was a lot of scenario-based questions, even more than content. Don't get me wrong, you do need to know fractions, you do need to know, you know, um, different, like the slope formula, right, MX plus, oh, what was it? MX plus B, you need to know slope, you need to know rate and all those different things, but there's a lot of scenarios, right? And so when we think about select scenarios, you want to pick the answer choice where students have the most input, right? They're sharing, they're thinking, they're doing think or share, things like that. So, so look for those trends. Pull out important information. So that's typically going to be the grade level. Um, even when we think about math, right? There might be questions that are very grade specific, where it's like, you need to know the third grade T for this. And so I would also say, hey, pull from free practice exams that are third grade, like go to the star and like pull up those exams. They do have practice questions there because you know you are gonna need to know that. Um, and then also make sure you do not change your answers. I know that's hard. We've been taught to kind of go back and recheck. That significantly decreases your score. You want to stick with your first mind, one and done, you're good to go. Um, Reread the questions in their entirety. Do not move from a question that you're confused about until you've read it twice. Now, if you read a question and you're very confident in it, then great, go for it, right? But if you read a question and you're like, oh, let me go back, then go back, reread, plug in your, your answer and do not change it. Um, utilize the highlighter and strikeout tool, right? You will see me do that a lot when I'm showing how to break down a question. Ask yourself, how do I best study? Right. There's a lot of study guides going on. You got certified teacher, you got 240, you got Mormon tracks, you got like all these different study materials. And guys, you can start to overwhelm yourself if you don't pay attention to the type of learner that you are. If you're a visual learner, then there's a lot of videos you can go and watch on these topics. Right. If you're a hands on learner, then, you know, you might need to lean into a boot camp or a one-on-one -on -one session where you have a tutor who can break down the information as you're practicing the practice questions. If you're an audio learner, right, you might need to, once again, take a boot camp or do a one-on-one -on -one session so you can hear somebody break down the information. Um, if you're somebody who's like, hey, I just need a really good study guide and I'm good to go. If memorization, you're like, hey, social studies, I didn't do well. I need to make sure that I can memorize. Quizlets. If your visual videos, it's very important for you to make sure you know what type of learner you are so you don't bombard yourself with like 20 different study materials and you're still not passing, right? Because it's almost like you're going, you're like a hamster in a wheel. And you just keep going and going and going and not reaching your final destination, which is the 240 certified, okay? Make sure you take a practice exam before studying. You need to know your strengths and weaknesses before you invest in anything, right? So um, if Pearson has that $10 test, if you're doing certified teacher, take the practice exam. If you're doing 240, take a practice exam so that you know where you are, right? Because if you really need help in ELAR, then you need to put a lot of your focus in ELAR. If you're struggling in math, you need to put a lot of your focus there. If you're struggling with pace, then you need to practice your uh, practice your pacing using a timer, right? Um, because when we look at the format, that's what we're getting ready to do. You're gonna need to say, okay, I have 35 minutes for fine arts. I need to make sure I'm practicing with a timer after I get the accuracy down. Um, make sure that you're realistic with your study plan. We are out for the summer, right? But I believe that teachers need to also invest in rest as well. Um, but that also means you have more time to study. So your study plan might look like, okay, well, I'm going to study 30 to 45 minutes a day because I'm struggling with fractions and math or I'm struggling with the scenarios and I need to focus on that. So what have you been using so far to study? I'm going to change it where only um, the host can see your responses. Uh, let's see. What have you been using to study so far? Go ahead and put your answer in the chat. What have you been using to study so far? Hmm. 
Okay, so far I see 240, certified teacher, REA guide. Um, just make sure you get a practice test in there. Um, easy tutoring. You have a textbook. Okay, it's a lot of a lot of 240, a lot of 240. Um, just make sure you do not overwhelm yourself. 240 can get very overwhelming. Okay, thank you. So recommended resources. Things that I recommend that I feel like will actually be very helpful for you. And I'm going to put some of these, um, put this link in the in the chat. So the REA book, right? EC36, REA, um, make sure to take the practice exams if you bought the book and, you know, you, if you bought a newer version, it has the interactive practice exams. Um, the free TEA study guide, they have questions. Um, you know, the TEA guide should be very close to what you see on the actual exam. Um, of course, the EC36 uh, boot camp that we're going to be doing this weekend, I think will be very, very helpful. You get a mentor, you get access to a lot of resources, and you get people on here who have a lot of experience with the content areas. Um, the social studies playlist. So if you know social studies is an issue for you, I'm going to go ahead and drop this playlist in the chat so you'll have access to it as well. For those of you who arrived a little bit later, um, we're also going to have another seminar at nine tonight where we'll be going over a lot of questions as well. So just something to think about. Um, so breaking down this exam, let me go ahead and pull this slideshow. Okay, so 391. So when we look at time, this is where the timer comes in. So first you want to study for accuracy, then you want to study for time. Because at the end of the day, the reality of it is you can know all the questions, but if you run out of time, what does it matter? Right. So you still want to make sure you're practicing with a timer. So for ELAR, you get one hour and 10 minutes, which is a lot longer than the other sections. So that's really good. For math, you also get one hour and 10 minutes. So uh, me and Ms. Lisa, we're here to make sure that that ELAR and that math portion is exactly where it needs to be. Um, for social studies, you get 50 minutes. Social studies is a lot of memorization. So I highly recommend the playlist that I just dropped in the chat, as well as some quizlets, okay? Um, for science, you get 55 minutes. For fine arts, health, and physical education, you get 35 minutes. So you definitely want to make sure that you're moving with quickness and you understand. Uh, with language arts, you have 45 selective response questions. Math is 40. Social studies is 40 even though they only give you 50 minutes. So, you know, that's about a minute, maybe 30 seconds on each question. Um, then you have science, 45 selected questions, fine arts, health and physical education is 40 selected response questions. So I would be studying with a timer. Um, so make sure you know the content. Once you're familiar with the content, make sure you use a timer to time yourself while you are practicing. That's gonna be very important. So ELAR concepts, you want to know phonological awareness, you want to know phonemic awareness, fluency, alphabetic principle, comprehension strategies, literal, inferential, and evaluative. Um, let's see here. Decoding strategies like sight words, homophones, homographs, high frequency words, oil language. Um, these are concepts that we're going to dive a little bit more into around 9 p.m. I'll be going over questions and things like that. Ms. Lisa is going to be going over the math questions today as well during our, our webinar. Um, so please go ahead and put yes or no in the chat if you've used the EC36 study guide. If you've used it, put yes in the chat. If you have not, put no. So this right here that I'm dropping in right now, this is a recommended Quizlet for ELAR practice questions. I've used these questions myself. Um, and also I'm going to drop the EC36 study guide as well. So 
So for those of you who have not used it, it's going to be in the chat for you. All right, so what we're getting ready to do is focus in on uh, math. And so when we look at the study guide here for math, um, let's see, overview and exam framework. Let me make sure I'm sharing my screen because I'll just be talking. Okay. So when we go to the math portion here, because they do break down the competencies, that's one thing I like about this study guide. I can print it out. Um, math instruction, right? So that's when you need the knowledge to plan, organize, and implement instruction and assess learning. Um, we have competency two, number concepts and operations. So I would just say, hey, print out the study guide, look over the competency so you know the framework and mindset of the exam. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Lisa so she can go ahead and break down some questions. She's amazing. I'm going to get it where she can share her screen as well, and I'm going to stop share. Okay, let's see. Well, first off, um, how many of you feel like you're really good at math? Anybody in here? Because that's, I mean, you can give me a thumbs up. Nicole, you're seeing kind of. <laughs> Well, we're going I'm going to show you some questions that you might um, see. So one thing that you need to realize uh, with the math um, is always think about student centered. This is a student centered. This is the belief of TEA. So that's how they're going to test it. Um, let me. Uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Good. Well, let me see. Yes. Okay. Um, so just make sure you keep that in mind. It's not just a math test. It's, um, it's more of how instructionally you would see that. And you'll notice that in um, these questions. Okay, here we go. All right, first question. So a fifth grade teacher writes a problem 56 times 12 on the board. Okay, students begin to solve the problem mentally, and as each student finds a solution, he or she signals the teacher with a thumbs up signal when almost every student has been given a thumbs up signal. The teacher has followed following dialogue with the student. So the teacher says, Billy, what answer did you come up with? And Billy says, um, 672. Great job, Billy, that is the correct answer. Raise your hand if you found 672 to be the product, like Billy. Almost every student in the class raised a hand. The teacher writes the next problem on the board. Which of the following instructional adjustments can, and that's important, instructional adjustments, how is she going to change this? Um, can the teacher make to best assess all of the students' understanding of multiplying two-digit numbers? So my first question is, do you all feel comfortable with 56 times 12, correct? You can go, okay. Um, so let's look at A, B, C, and D. A, and I want you to tell me, and I don't know that I can get the chat um, before I was not able to see y'all's answers. So I don't know if I have um, access to that or not. So um, um, they hadn't put any um, answers yet, but I definitely can tell you what's in the chat when they- Okay, okay. So A, allowing students to write their answers on paper, then collecting the papers at the end of the lesson. B, asking multiple students to share and defend their solutions before acknowledging the correct answer. C, asking students who did not hold up their thumbs to share their answer and explain, or D, having Billy work the problem on the board in front of class. So you can tell me by voice if you, if you have that, or you can just tell me by chat. What do you think the answer is? And don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about it. Just tell me what do you think? And if it's wrong, it's, it's, it doesn't matter anyway. Tell me what you think. 
So most are leaning toward what well, is back and forth between B and D. Okay. So let me talk about D. Uh, and I'm agreeing with B and D. What, they're okay answers. One of them is just a little bit better. So D is not the answer. Um, because um, did you say A and D or B and D? You're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> they were leaning towards B and D. So okay. B is in boy, D is in dog. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So D is not correct because for him to just work it on the board, that's just one student. The key was, are we figuring out the other students? Do we need to know all students, right? So B says asking multiple students to share and defend. See that defend? There's solutions before acknowledging the correct answer. So like if, you, if you're in class and you ask a student, you're going to say, well, how did you do it? That's defending it. So that's why it would be B. Any questions on that one? So do you see how it's written? This te this These tests are written for instructional, um, not necessarily the math, but you've got to know the math, okay? All right, let's look at this one. Which of the following learning goals is most appropriate in third grade unit on money? Now, here's the issue with this. You need, to, you need to know what third graders should be learning and fourth graders and fifth graders and so on. So this is going to be a little tricky if you don't know what third graders should learn. So look at these. A student will be able to determine the value of a collection of coins and bills. B, students will be able to represent the value of collection of coins as a fraction of a dollar. Students will be able to differentiate between money received as income and money received as gifts. And then D, students will be able to solve problems involving money by performing operations on decimals in the hundreds place. What do y'all think? And just make sure you put your answer in the chat. We have um, uh, A, D so far, C. So it's a combination. It's kind of a little bit okay. all over. Mm -hmm. um, and so that probably tells me you're just not um, real sure what third graders should be knowing. Let's talk about D. Now, uh, decimals on hundredths place. That's really not a learning goal for third grade. C, um, income. Well, first off, a third grader's not going to know what income is, okay? Um, and gifts, they're, they're just not going to, that, that's just not going to, they're gonna, not going to have to know that. And B, the value of coins as a fraction of a dollar. Third graders will not have to know the fraction of a dollar. But what they will need to know is determine the value basically of counting a collection of coins and bills. Okay. So you might want to, you know, you can look at a textbook, a third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever, sixth grade textbook, and that's good. You're going to know a lot of information from that. Okay. And you can pull up the text, um, go to tea.gov. And you can pull up any text you want to. Any questions on that one? Okay. So the last, that was a, so the last one's a pretty hard question, real hard. And you must know math um, well <laughs> to, to do this one. So let's get into this one here. It's a little crazy. So a code sign arrived at 12.05 and the su subsequent temperatures were recorded in the table shown. If X represents the number of hours after 12.05 a.m., which of the following equations best represents the change in temperature as a function of time? So this is pretty hard. Um, so if you don't know where to start and you need to ask me questions, the math part of this, um, I understand that. If you think you know, you can go ahead and tell us. But I want you to know that 
this, and, and Elisa talked about this uh, at the beginning of the webinar. MX plus B, Y equals MX plus B. And if you'll notice, the answer choices were in that, in that. Anybody have an idea what that answer might be? So the so I'm going to kind of teach you a little bit about the math, okay? And if you know it, great. Um, if you don't, so the first thing I want you to notice is how is this how is this changing? Twelve oh five to two oh five, right? Okay. So what? How many hours is that? Y'all know. You can put that in chat and Elisa can tell me. Yes. So you definitely can put like how many hours from like 12.05 to 2.05. For example, that should have been, let me go ahead and read what's in the chat. Two, absolutely. Correct. And we got two again. What happens yep. here? What happens from 4.05 to 5.05? Nicole says one hour. Right. This is where our problem is. So they start, a lot of times these tables will be one, 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 one. Okay. But they didn't do that. They skipped some. So, so we, we need to notice that, that we need to know it in one hour. What about this? How is this changing? 67 to 60 is, what's the difference there? It's going down. So I'm going to say it's decreasing by. How much? 67 minus 60 is what? Are they putting that in chat? 67. I have people who seven. They had seven. Okay, perfect. So you've got seven here. You've got seven here. Now, what happens when we're at 53? Minus 49.5. How much is that? They're thinking. Four point five. Someone has three point five. Three point five. That's right. This is three point five. So so what that's telling us is every hour. One hour, it's decreasing by the temperature of 3.5. We can't say seven because we've got to put it in one, okay? So let's look at these answer choices. What do you, now, now that I've kind of given you a little bit of information, what answer choice do you think it would be? Somebody said A. Okay. Someone had D. Okay. So the problem with A is the fact that this is a negative number. Okay. So we're not going to pick A. And we are going to add it to 67. And so that's not going to be right. And that's not going to be right. If you knew it was negative 3.5, you know the answer, even if you didn't know the 67. This is how math works. And this is how math works on star tests, like in middle school and high school. Um, students can know part of the part of the answer. They don't know the whole thing. They can figure it out because it's a multiple choice. Now, who thought that was a hard question? Did you agree <laughs> with me? If you're not an algebra person per se you're not really good at algebra you're going to have a hard time with this question students would have a you know a hard time so this was definitely a math question this was not really asking any kind of teacher thing any kind of teacher applying it was a strictly math question and um it was hard <laughs> It was hard, but the way that you broke it down, Lisa, I mean, you know, I'm not a math person either. I 
am able to tutor only so much, but like you really broke it down. So, I mean, it definitely made sense to me. Um, and Lisa will also be working with us for, and thank you so much, you did a great job, for EC through six boot camp. So on that Saturday, we'll be going over math instruction. Um, and so hopefully with this was helpful at 9 p.m. We'll be going over more ELAR instruction. And so um, I did want to, and hopefully this was helpful for you guys and you were starting to kind of understand like this is what the math is and these are some strategies we want you to look over and understand uh, because at the end of the day, this test is 40% content and it is, 60% mindset. So it's all about making sure that you really understand you're going in confident. And a big part of that is just being prepared, being prepared at the end of the day. So with the EC6 bootcamp, we will be having it this weekend. Um, all content areas will be covered and you'll be learning how to study and what to study in order to be successful on this exam, okay? Uh, June 8th, we'll be doing math, 9 a.m. to 11. June 9th, ELAR, 9 a.m. to 12. And then June 10th will be science and any fine arts, okay? Email us if you are interested. But other than that, you guys have been great. Make sure you log in at 9 p.m. tonight for more ELAR um, instruction. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Bye. Thank you again, Lisa. Bye. See you later. You are very welcome. Have a great rest of your day.